some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had now, a one of the great questions that people God the Creator should be obvious by these gentlemen. If you were looking down or Jesus from high lines of God the Creator. Anyone who's at all familiar with the Word of God knows that one of the really big ideas in the Bible is the theme of the Lamb. Now a lamb doesn't have claws or fangs, or exoskeleton, has no means of protection. And the lamb is generally emphasized in the scripture as being gentle and meek and uh, uncomplaining in its, uh, in its suffering. And so this idea of the lamb is pivotal for our understanding of the Bible. Why the very first story after the fall tells us about two boys. Cain, who brought of the fruit of his own labors, the fruit of the ground, the cursed earth, and as if to say, God's going to have to accept this is the best I can do, and he's just going to have to accept it. It was not God's way. And certainly Adam and Eve understood the principle that without the shedding of blood is no remission, because the very first animals that were slain were slain by God himself in preparing two coats he didn't give them skins and say, make your own outfit. Uh, he prepared an outfit for them and he gave them these coats. And so this illustrates from the very beginning this principle that the robes that the child of God wears are not robes of their own fashioning. They are the robes of his righteousness prepared by God and given to us ready formed. We go through these stories of the lamb and of course eventually we come to Genesis 22. In Genesis 22, the lamb is typified. In Leviticus 22, the lamb is qualified. We have all the details as to what makes a lamb acceptable to God. And of course, in Revelation 22, we have the lamb glorified. As we read through the stories of the lamb, this question hangs on the air. Asked by Isaac as he climbed Mount Moriah, where is the lamb? And Abraham's interesting response is not simply that God would provide a lamb, but God will provide himself the lamb. And this is really reflexive. He would provide himself as the lamb. What a radical idea this is. When we come to the New Testament, of course, the question that Isaac asks is answered by John the Baptist. When he points to the Lord Jesus and says, there he is, Behold the Lamb of God who bears away the sin of the world. Now with any great doctrine, we will have first mention and final mention, and then we will have full mention. The first time something appears in scripture, it usually is the key under the mat that allows us entree into that truth. And we can say that because the Bible isn't simply chronological. It's a thematic unfolding of truth. And so the first time it occurs, is going to be uh, an, an insight into that theme all the way through the Bible. Uh, the final mention of the Lamb, of course, is found in the book of the Revelation. As we turn to the book of Revelation, we find the Lamb everywhere. In fact, the scripture teaches there that even though there are gates of pearl and there are foundation stones that are precious gems and the street is gold and the sea is crystal, and there are these angelic beings, some of them with six wings and uh, all sorts of exotic creatures there. The Bible tells us that people aren't looking at any of these things. They're all focused on a little lamb as it had been freshly slain. And so in the book of the Revelation, we read about the worth of the lamb and the wrath of the lamb and the followers of the Lamb, and the throne of the Lamb, and the temple of the Lamb, and the song of the Lamb, and the book of the Lamb. 
it's full of the Lord Jesus presented as God's Lamb, as the one who was slain before the foundation of the world. In other words, before a sinner ever needed a Savior, God had already counted the cost and Christ had already, in his heart, laid himself down as God's Lamb so that he could provide salvation for us. And when we come to the end of our Bible, we read these beautiful words concerning the Lamb, the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne shall shepherd them there and lead them to living fountains of waters. That's the actual word, that the Lamb will be the shepherd. We know he's the good shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. There are many sheep that died for their shepherds, but only one shepherd who ever died for his sheep. And the Lord Jesus gave himself as that willing sacrifice. And while it may seem like mixed metaphors, what a wonderful thing it is to know that we, his flock, have a shepherd who knows exactly what it's like to be a lamb. And he manifests this heart of love and compassion to us so that we read in chapter 14 and verse 4, they follow the lamb wherever he goes. What a beautiful picture, what a pastoral scene for the people of God when we get to those everlasting hills and he wipes away every tear from our eyes and all the heartache and difficulties and failures of our lives all have been covered over by the redemptive work of the Lamb of God at Calvary. He has paid the price to make everything new, to set everything right, to pay every debt, to wash away every sin, to wipe away every tear. And when we at last arrive uh, at home in heaven, we'll just have eyes for one person. We will behold the Lamb and we will delight in him and we'll never be very far away from him. We'll follow him wherever he goes. May the Lord help us at the present time to see ourselves as that little flock. He says, I send you forth as sheep among wolves. It's dangerous, it's a dangerous world out there, but our good shepherd is watching over us and making sure we all make it safely home. He says, I give to my sheep eternal life and they shall never perish and no one will pluck them out of my hand. And so with such assurance, with such certainty, we not only have a mighty savior, we have a tender little lamb who knows our feelings and knows the dangers and the challenges and the fears we face. And someday, as he shepherd us home, we'll make it safe to the other side and we'll see the one who became the lamb of God to save us from our sins, hallelujah. What a savior.